Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio, and today we're going to be taking a look at the biggest sham Games Workshop has ever pulled. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe, do all kinds of videos, reactions, reviews, news, painting, modeling, conversion, tutorials, pretty much anything to do with Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromander, Age of Sigmar, War Cry, some Horus Heresy, uh, all uh, you know, Games Workshop games and products. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I have mentioned quite a few things in the past as far as currency exchange rate. Uh, games workshops prices internally and then also uh, basically in Europe and then also the United States and uh, how those things don't really line up and uh, how the market breaks down percentage wise in those different regions as well and uh, essentially the uh, biggest sham that games workshop has uh, ever pulled so uh, there is quite a bit in this video it might not be for everyone if you're not into this type of video I completely understand uh, you're gonna get all of your regular content as well uh, but just wanted to take a look at this so the first part of the video we're just gonna break down the difference in actual prices in the various currencies uh, British pound euro and the dollar and then we're gonna take out the look at the exchange rate and then also see how has the exchange rate and the different fluctuations in prices in these various countries reflected on Games Workshop's uh, balance sheet as of their recent year-end summary. Uh, and then also we're gonna take a look at uh, essentially uh, the Games Workshop markup from MSRP that their intermediaries uh, receive, essentially the discount that like a non-Games Workshop store will receive when they buy products from them and then the difference between what they buy them from and the markup uh, just kind of expose some of the backwards uh you know the stuff behind the scenes uh, i've had people in the past push back saying that games workshop only offers retail stores you know a 20 percent discount and various levels obviously it's going to be different in re different regions and based on the overall sales uh, but we're going to just go through all that touch on everything and uh, hopefully just kind of open people's eyes a little bit this is not by any means a games workshop hate video uh, it's a games workshop truth video so if you don't enjoy facts if you don't enjoy the truth or you are undeniably loyal to games workshop and don't care and don't think they can do anything wrong again this video is not going to be for you but if you want to see the truth if you want to see some numbers some statistics some facts by all means uh, stay tuned so first off we're gonna start with our games workshop website in the United Kingdom uh, we see here that it is 125 pounds for Kill Team Morak. So we're just using Kill Team Morak as an example, as it is a box set that's still available in the web store uh, and gives us a clear idea how they price their different products in their different countries. So in British pounds, Kill Team Morak is 125 pounds. Next, we're going to go over to the uh, Euro. This is like European pricing right here. Uh, so we see that same Kill Team Morak box set is 160 euros. So 125 in British pounds, 160 in euros. And then we're just going to go over to the uh, US website and we see it's $210 here in the United States. So obviously there's a lot of factors that go into the difference in prices, not just currency fluctuations. Because a lot of Games Workshop's products, or at this point in time, most of Games Workshop's products are theoretically or they claim manufactured in the UK, uh, you know, it would obviously be a lot cheaper to, you know, ship things and sell them inside of the country. So once you start exporting to different countries, there are various tariffs, taxes, and obviously like freight costs as well uh, that go into the price differences. So we're going to take into account all that stuff. But again, we're just going to focus right now on the actual currency differences. So we have 125 British pounds, we have 160 euro, and we have 210 uh, dollars. And then obviously, if you're familiar with what's going on currently in the world, or you watch currency exchanges, which most people don't, just so happens that is and has been my profession for decades, uh, essentially, I pay attention to this stuff, most people don't. But if you look at the exchange rate, if you look at the chart, the strength of the dollar, the strength of the euro, and the strength of the pound right now, the dollar is substantially stronger over the last few years uh, than it has been. It's actually at like a 20-year high strength in comparison to the euro, to the pound, and uh, many other currencies as well. So that would reason that actually uh, we would be able to, as Americans, purchase a lot more product for our money because our currency is strong. Um, now, we're going to look at the numbers and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So here we have uh, dollars to British pounds. So here we have $1 is equal to 0.85 pounds sterling. So if we just take that 125 pounds for the Kill Team Morak set, we see that actually the exchange rate price for Kill Team Morak in dollars would be $146.57. So call it $150. Instead, it is $210, which is an additional $60, which is, you know, roughly, it's, it's over 
So if you have a, I mean, it's substantially more expensive. Uh, we could do the math on it and everything, uh, but you see that it's a massive difference between what they charge us and what it is. So of course it makes sense that freight additional costs, you know, would be factored in right here. So essentially what they're saying is, you know, if it's $125 in, or pound sterling rather, or it is $150 equivalents in dollars, essentially Games Workshop is pricing in $60 per box set for shipping. So obviously that is absolutely ridiculous. So we're actually at a point right now where you can actually go onto UK retailers if you live in the United States and you can actually purchase items from the UK and have them shipped from an independent retailer to the United States substantially cheaper than you'd be able to buy them for in the United States. So I can literally go on a website in the UK right now and I can buy a $125 box set and the shipping is roughly 25 pounds on top of that. So when it's all said and done, it comes out to about 150 pounds for that set, which gives us essentially $175. And they sell the box set here for like 210. Now in many cases, if you purchase more than one item, you can get substantially better deal than that as well. Uh, so now let's look at the comparison. Again, I'm gonna look at dollars uh, compared to euros, uh, just because it gives me the more accurate picture. Um, so we see the same box set obviously in euros, uh, the same box set in euros is 160 euros so again it's outside of the uk but it's closer you know so you would assume freight costs would be less but that same kilty morak box set 160 euros and again here in the united states 210 dollars so we're paying an extra 50 dollars per box set in shipping which is roughly another 50 percent markup over what it costs to ship to europe versus what it costs to ship to the united states so again we can literally go on websites in europe and purchase items substantially cheaper and then get them shipped here and still save massive amounts of money, which obviously makes no sense because you would think if Games Workshop is going to be shipping in bulk to their Memphis distribution center, that they're gonna be able to ship things a lot cheaper than random postal service is gonna be able to take a single box or a single war item across the ocean. So clearly, Games Workshop is taking massive advantage of the situation uh, and taking advantage of its United States customers massively. Uh, which, you know, is blatant disrespect, in my opinion, as we are their largest market. Uh, so we're going to look now at the press announcement for Games Workshop PLC. Uh, this is the 26th of July uh, semi-annual report. This is for the entire year that just ended in 2022. So it basically is from 2021 until May of 2022, which is the fiscal year that Games Workshop follows um, as they are not on like your typical calendar year from January to December. Uh, so we're just going to scroll down here. I'm not going to look into all the details here. I've talked about quite a bit of this. I don't want to bore you guys. I'm trying to keep this video relatively short uh, just to make a simple point uh, about just what Games Workshop is doing and you know how dirty and disgusting it is uh, the way they are essentially disrespecting their United States uh, customers. So that being said, you know, if you're in Europe, if you're in United Kingdom, don't take this personally. Uh, you know, we, it doesn't reflect on all of you, uh, the poor tactics that Games Workshop uses and, uh, you know, just overall scumminess. So here we're going to scroll all the way down to page 13 of 25 of the financial report. And we see here under risks, uh, Games Workshop has listed foreign, foreign exchange as one of their biggest risks. So our biggest currency exposures are to the euro and U.S. dollar. So obviously because... Uh, Essentially, I think it's close to, I would have to double check, but I believe 78% of Games Workshop sales come from outside of the United Kingdom. Uh, and their largest market by far is the United States, which makes up somewhere around 60% of their total sales. So 60% of their sales are to the United States. So obviously, if they overcharge the United States on those sales, they make a substantial larger increase to their profit margin. Uh, so here we have the period end rate I use for balance sheet and then average rate used for earnings. So essentially what that is, is it's how they calculate the exchange rate and how it differed over the years. So in 2021 for the US dollar, we see the exchange rate was 1.42 for their balance sheet and the exchange rate was 1.34 for their earnings. So obviously they took advantage of that. Uh, and then in 2022, the exchange rate had come down to 1.26 and 1.34. So they left it the same for their earnings, but it's substantially cheaper for their balance sheet calculations. And then for 2021 in the euro, it was 1.16. And then for their, uh, you know, same thing, it was 1.13. And then again, this year, uh, they kept it the same at 1.18 for both their balance sheet and their earnings. What does that mean? 
it's basically just the different ways that they're calculating the exchange rate uh, to see how that's profitable for them. But the most important part is not any of that. This is the most important part right here. Okay. This essentially is them stating, hey, we actually took advantage of the United States and Europe with these currency fluctuations to make more money by overcharging them. So it says the net impact in the year of exchange rate fluctuations on our operating profit was a gain of 1.8 million uh, pounds. So in 2021, it was a loss of 4 million. So in 2021, they were using accurate exchange rates to calculate prices. In 2022 year, they basically started doing this thing where instead of using currency exchange rate, because the British pound is sinking in value, because the euro actually also is sinking in value, and because the US dollar is getting substantially stronger, you know, which we're not going to get into all the geopolitics and all, you know, the geo economics, world economics, all that macro stuff. We're just going to talk about what's going on right here. Essentially, what Games Workshop is saying is they turned a $4 million loss in 2021 into a $1.8 million gain by instead of using the actual exchange rates, just charging essentially their customers outside the UK extra money, substantially higher than what it was costing them extra for shipping and freight and all that stuff. So they basically profited off of overpricing goods outside of the United Kingdom um, because they could. They you know, essentially just decided to do whatever they wanted and took advantage of it. So again here, we see basically, without taking into account all of the little details and everything, we see that clearly Games Workshop intentionally prices products higher than they should be in Europe and in the United States to take advantage of those demographics. And in the case of the United States, because that is their largest demographic, it makes up a large percentage of their sales, the largest percentage of their sales, they essentially are taking greater advantage of the United States. So the truth is, what should happen is, over the next few months, or let's say the next year, when we see the following numbers, and they come out a year from now, roughly, in 2023 numbers, what we should see is, is that now that the euro and the dollar are trading in parity, we should see a much closer rate. And then now that the British pound is very, very weak in comparison to the dollar, again, we should see the difference in the exchange rate come down. So here it's 1.42, here it's 1.26. And then if we just come back to our calculator here, and we're just going to put in the uh, pound sterling. And if we just take one pound sterling and see it's 1.17 US dollars. So obviously big businesses operate with the lag, but we see here it went from 1.42 to 1.26. So next year, assuming it stays where it's at and doesn't get any stronger, which likely it will, uh, 1.17 would be. Now, is it possible by the end of the year that the dollar and the British pound are trading at parity equal? It is very, very likely actually uh, based on the current trend. And then again, if we just switch from the dollar back to the euro, and then we look, you'll actually see that for the first time in literally decades, uh, that actually the dollar and the euro are equal. Uh, so basically we have one US dollar is the equivalence of one euro. So again, the dollar is extremely strong in comparison to uh, most currencies around the world. And this should be reflected in the pricing but instead of reflecting that in the pricing, instead of treating their customers you know, fairly or doing the correct business thing and using actual exchange rates, Games Workshop calculates the average exchange rate over a certain period of time and then basically just decides how they're going to price things based off of that. So again, you know, these are all facts. It's up to you, you know, what this means. How do you take this? Um, these are not opinions. We're looking at actual numbers, exchange rates, and everything. But if you see these numbers and you can make the connection between them, it's clear what's happening is Games Workshop is basically the United Kingdom, the British pound is weak. The euro is weak. The dollar is very strong. So if Games Workshop were to price their products accordingly, they would actually make a little less money off of their European customers uh, because the pound has actually weakened in comparison to the euro and they would make a lot less money off of their United States customers because even if we looked at those numbers and said okay that's fine we'll use the games workshop official numbers in 2021 it was 1.42 and in 2022 it was 1.26 so that same 125 uh, pounds would actually come out to 177 dollars at a 1.42 exchange rate so that kill team morox set should cost 177 dollars plus additional freight 
which you know roughly you could say it would be the equivalence of 10 or maybe $20 but even with that it would still be under the 200 plus dollars that they're charging for it and then if we take that same price again the 125 pounds and we multiply that by the 2022 exchange rate that would be 1.26 that same box set, the Kill Team Mark set, should be priced in dollars at $157.50. And again, instead of that, it is priced at $210. So they're actually pricing the European box set at $160, or 160 euros rather, which is equivalent in dollars, the same, because the exchange rate is the same. So basically, they are accounting for the difference to Europe. It's slightly more expensive, obviously, to ship to the United States, but they're adding on an additional $50 in what I call America tax. So, you know, is that right? Is that fair? Is it a good business decision to exploit your other countries uh, and take advantage of, you know, making extra money off of them? Well, it put an extra $1.8 million in Games Workshop's profit instead of a $4 million loss from 2021. So the truth is, you know, they basically turned around a $5.8 million from a net loss to a net positive uh, by taking into account their foreign sheet foreign exchange risk so you know it's up to you how you look at that what you think of it etc uh, but that is the truth those are the numbers those are the facts so there's one more thing I want to look at in this video as well all right so this right here is an official games workshop uh, invoice for products now again I have used some numbers in the past for essentially the discount that Games Workshop offers to its stores. This is obviously in the United States in dollars. And uh, many people have argued with me about the percentage discount that they get at their store or what their store has told them that they get and they're just a customer or you know wherever else they get their false information. So what I did was I went ahead and took the information from uh, my store right here and I'm gonna show everybody the actual truth about Games Workshop and what they actually charge a retail store uh, and then what the MSRP is as well. So uh, we can go ahead and just zoom in here a little bit. And again, this is official Games Workshop uh, paperwork. You can't see it very well, but there is actually a Games Workshop watermark on this paper as well. Uh, so again, this is completely legit. Uh, I went ahead and blacked out all of the information, obviously, uh, to not reveal any personal stuff here. But um, So here we have Games Workshop in invoice, customer number and name, bill to, and then obviously the weight. And then we have the invoice itself, invoice number, invoice date, uh, you know, reprint date, and then the order number, customer reference, shipped, shipped via, uh, and just all the shipping info, and then who it is shipped to, obviously, the store's name. Again, keeping that all private uh, for, um, you know, discretion. So this is the important stuff right here. And I've obviously added in all of the text right here. So essentially, this was for a order of four Kill Team Morak box sets right here. Um, and of course, there was four in the order. And the unit retail price is $210, just like we saw on the actual website. You see the item number itself. And then you see the description, Kill Team Morak. And then here we see the actual pack unit price, which is what it costs the store to purchase these items. So here we see it is $115. So the retail price is $210. The pack unit price is $115. So now if we go down here, this is just the total basically for all the order. But if we take that $115 and we divide it by the retail MSRP price of $210, we said that it comes out to 0.55. So the 0.55 is the percentage of the MSRP that the store pays. So then if we take the discount uh, to figure that out, all we do is take 100% and then we multiply 0.55 or 55% and we get 45%. So the discount that Games Workshop gives to a retail store over MSRP is 45%. So if you walked into the store right now and you bought Kill Team Morak in the United States from an independent retailer, you're paying $210 for it plus tax. But the store itself has paid Games Workshop $115 uh, for that same box set. So again, they are making, they're getting a 45% discount. So if they're selling that box set for $115, they are actually making 1.82 times what they paid for it. So they're making an 82% markup over what they pay for the box set. So essentially, they're almost doubling their money. Now, obviously, a store has expenses. You know, they have to keep the lights on. They have to pay rent, all that stuff. But it's important that people see the actual information as it is and the truth.
because a lot of times people will put out these rumors or fake claims that stores don't make that much money or Games Workshop doesn't have a high profit margin or the exchange rate is not what's causing all the extras. It's actually like tariffs or shipping or whatever. But we've done an actual breakdown of the additional costs that Games Workshop incurred over the prior one year period and then the amount that they increased their profit margin by or their sale price by and they have more than made up for the additional costs with their price increases. So we essentially saw, and I did an in-depth video on this, we essentially saw Games Workshop's costs for transportation, VAT, and various other things go up and then we saw them raise their prices by more than that amount. So when it was all said and done, when they paid their staff, when they paid for additional freight and shipping, when they actually they actually paid less taxes, uh, when they paid you know additional expenses incurred by Brexit, and obviously we see the exchange rate uh, for currency for foreign exchange currency as well. Uh, when it's all said and done, we see that Games Workshop actually has raised their prices enough that they made more money off of that than they did off of. Uh, that they lost off of their additional expenses. So again, you know, I'm just exposing Games Workshop for what it is, uh, with the exception of essentially this screenshot right here or this, you know, invoice. Uh, everything else is publicly available. You can go look at it yourself. Um, there's no speculation in this video. Uh, this is all facts. This is all reality. So do with it as you will. Again, I'm not a Games Workshop hater, uh, but there is a big difference between the illusion of truth and the actual truth. There's a big difference between uh, the prices in British pounds, euros, and dollars. And then also, you know, the same way that Games Workshop has taken advantage of the foreign exchange rate and the strong British pound over the last, you know, 20 years, uh, they're now still taking advantage of that, even though now it's weak. So by essentially just overpricing items in the United States and also in Europe, uh, they're taking advantage of the situation, even though their currency is weakening in comparison. So again, not a hate video on UK, not a hate video on you know Europe or anyone for that matter, uh, just the truth how it is. Again, I'm not hating on stores uh, for the 185% um, markup uh, over their retail or extra 85% profit. I know it costs money uh, to do all these things. I'm just showing you guys the raw numbers. I know you guys like the actual data. I know you like the you know official prices and different videos I do. So here's another one for you. You can take it as you will, uh, but everything in this video is obviously facts, and uh, I brought the receipts to prove it. So uh, that's it for today. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to like, subscribe. Feel free to share this with your friends. Uh, expose the truth about uh, Games Workshop and essentially some of their dirty practices. And uh, obviously, if you are into daily videos, reactions, reviews, news, painting, modeling, conversion tutorials, unique content that you will not get from anywhere else on the internet um, to do with Games Workshop, Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and of course, some Warcry, Horus Heresy, all that good stuff as well, make sure to like and subscribe. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.